Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can start restricting several endpoints and several actions in your ASP.NET Core application. We're going to start with claims and in a later video, which might be in the top right corner of your screen right now, we're going to see how we can do this with roles and later with a combination of roles and claims. First, I need to clarify something. Up until now, we've only been using authentication. We haven't been using authorization at all. Well, maybe slightly uh, in the authorize uh, attribute, but this is kind of box standard authorization, uh, nothing custom, nothing special. Uh, so what I want to do here is I'm going to say dot add authorization and not just the bare authorization uh, for the project. This doesn't really add anything we don't have right now, but we are going to customize this quite a bit. Now, maybe not so much in this video, but uh, maybe more in the next one. The main thing I need to explain here is that authentication is all about logging in. And authorization is about knowing which actions our user can actually do and which he is not allowed to or she's not allowed to. I took some time and I created this tags controller and this is all about uh, tags on our posts. So a post now can be created and can have several tags associated with it. And this controller will just return all the tags in the system. And what we want to do uh, as the outcome of this video is actually restrict this endpoint to only be accessible by maybe bloggers or an admin will say, are we see gonna how we're going to name the claim. But for now, the goal is to restrict this endpoint. If I run this now, so let me just go ahead and run this application. I can go here, I can log in. I can get my JWT and use it here to authenticate and now if I get all the posts there should be nothing here but now I can create a post and I can say new post with tags and then I'm gonna add a couple of tags maybe amazing and also a speednet core so two tags so I'm creating this post created so if I get all posts again as you can see our post with this name and two tags we're gonna be fixing how this looks in a future video so don't worry about this but currently all you need to know is we get a post with several tags associated with it now if i go to this tags endpoint here i can just call it to get all the tags in the system however i only want to do this if my user has the claim to view all the tags so i'm gonna close this down i'm gonna stop debugging my application and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can create a policy in ASP.NET Core. Now, a policy is just a combination of rules about accessing something in the system. And we can create one in the authorization uh, method here. So if I just say authorization options and expand this, I can do options.add policy. And the policy I want to create is uh, maybe the tag viewer policy and this policy consists of and now we're going to build our policy rules and we're going to say builder dot require claim and we're going to require a single claim and this is um, we can name this tags dot view and we're going to give it the acceptable value the acceptable value is true so only if a user has this claim they can actually see the tags and before I move any further, I want to show you how we have claims in our uh, JWTs. Here I have a JWT that our system creates and you can see that these, all of these, those are JWT claims. Some, some of them are just standard like the expiry, IAT, and BF. All those are just box standard JWT claims. Uh, there's the email one and the ID, which is my user's email and ID. And then we can also have private or custom claims. This is what we're going to be adding. We're going to be adding, adding custom claims. This tags view will be one of the custom claims we add in the system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to restrict this tags endpoint and I'm going to say authorize, just like we do here. I'm going to explain how this works, but authorize. And then we're going to say policy equals and I'm going to copy the name I used, which is tag viewer. And now only tag viewers are allowed to access this endpoint. 
So the way this works is like a tree structure. The authorization, which is on the controller level, covers everything. So this means that the authentication scheme is this. However, I can restrict further on the endpoint level. So I'm here, I'm saying, yeah, okay, authorize with this scheme, but also require this policy here. And this policy, as you can see, requires a claim. How do I add this claim into our system? Well, .NET Core has actually built-in functionality for this. Uh, for now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna hard code it in the register method, and I'm gonna do that just to save some time. So I'm gonna say that any user created from now on will have this by default. Uh, the code should be quite straightforward, so we need to say a few things. Uh, first, I need to say var new user id equals guid dot new guid. Oh, and it is a string, okay. So new user id dot to string. And then this same user manager has a method called add claim or claims. So one of the two, I'm gonna use add claim because I only wanna add one. And we're gonna add this to this new user. And then we have a new claim. And what is the claim name? It's tags.view. And we're gonna say that the value is true. So this will add the claim to our user. However, just adding the claim into the system won't add the claim into our JWT. So we also need to update our JWT generator code. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to extract this to its own method. So I'm going to say what should property. So claims equals this. I'm going to convert this to a list. Claims. And I am going to provide that here. So we have our claims back. But now I also want to load all the claims for my user. So user claims, the ones that are saved. And I'm going to say user manager dot get claims for this user and we are going to get the claims and we're going to say claims dot add range user claims and this will add all the users and then this automatically goes into the subject of the security token descriptor so it should just automatically add all the saved claims into this token so let's go ahead and run this before I show you how the new user will perform, we're going to see how the old user I created will perform. So the restricted version. Let me just log in with the old user. The old user now doesn't have this claim. So test.test.com. So this user should get a you're not allowed to use this endpoint error. So bearer. Try it out. And sure enough, I cannot access this endpoint. I can access all the other ones, so I can get all the posts just fine. But this one, I'm not allowed to access because, well, I don't have the claim. But what happens when I create a new user that now will have the claim? It might be worth saving this JWT to compare, but I'll just show you the new one now. So new user at test.com. Of course, you cannot have user claims without the user, so this is my but. This should be after the creation. And in fact, it should actually be after this check as well. So let's just move it here. Uh, that's a more appropriate place. Let's go ahead and create a new user now. So same thing, execute, and we got the new JWT. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna log out from this specific one and I'm going to log in with a new one and now I can see them because if I put the JWT into a JWT parser so this is the old one you see no claim here but if I paste this one here we do have the tags view true and because this is an accepted value I'm allowed to now see this endpoint and actually interact with it really. So this is how you can do this with just a single claim. If you wanted to add more claims, 
let me just show you how the builder works there's so much more you can do here so you can just say builder dot require a session role authenticated user username you can have so many flexible requirements uh, for now we're just going to have a claim you could have more and in the next video i'm going to show you how you can have roles to actually package up a lot of behavior in a single thing because remember the bigger the jwt becomes the more stuff you transfer over the wire and this is not really something you should be doing you should keep it as compact as possible that's why the standard jwt claim names are just three letters that's all i want to show you for this video leave a like if you liked it subscribe for more content like this and i'll see you in the next video keep coding